the homework are supposed to do well. So if not, it's on me. It means I'm, I'm screwing up. <clears throat> Hi, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, good, thank you. Daniel, can you talk just for a second? Daniel? Hello, oh, hello. Andrew. Yeah, Andrew, can you talk? Hello. It doesn't hello, work. Hello. Hello. Okay, I mean, yeah, Andrew, can you use the mic? Hello, or, hello. I hate this. So, can you try again? Hello. All right. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Okay, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. What did you guys? Huh? What did you guys think of the midterm? I think it was okay. Yeah. I thought there but would be a convergence. Than... What? I thought there would be a convergence question, but oh well. Uh, there was the uh, that. Uh, yeah, I know. I could have made this so much harder. Like I stepped, I stopped myself putting descent, putting ALM, putting. I could have made this like ridiculous. But like, I don't know, I mean. <laughs> Why are you like yelling at me? Okay, good. Uh, I don't know, but it was harder than midterm one, right? Andrew? Andrew? I think it was around the same. Okay. What if I do the same, but for the final? So same thing, but one hour. Andrew? I already asked the people here, I'm asking you guys. What do you guys think? Uh, same same thing, final. I guess this. Like, did you need uh, more time? If you had more time, would you have been better? Same mm, for the phone, okay. Maybe, maybe. Since the second part is about PD, Doing calculation, calculus of variations. Um, yes. You probably do. There's less plug in numbers and more solving things. So maybe more time would be good.
All right, anyhow, let's start. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, we're going to go a little bit deep into a uh, variation of calculus, calculus of variations. Um, so, yeah, maybe question three have it be one of these. Uh, Optimizations, <clears throat> like duration of the okay, whatever. <clears throat> um, yeah, next week we'll do the last topic will be second variation. So this will be the analogous thing of uh, convexity. So um, all right. There is here. Okay, let's do way more examples. I mean, these are a bit hard. Uh, it's mostly you understanding what's going on. Because um, I will have an only Lagrange and then a second variation. And I think that will be it. Um, some of the stuff we do, you, you won't be tested on it. All right. Um, but yeah, this one is in the homework, right? So. You have a, a functional, a Lagrangian, and uh, we proved last time that uh, if you want to find the variational derivative, uh, you can just take these following uh, derivatives. And by setting it to zero, which is called the first order condition, like in, like we did on first week, uh, it gives you the minimizer. Minimizer uh, solves it, meaning that um, f of u is bigger than f of u star. Let me call it v, um, for all v, okay? So, uh, the minimizer can be found by solving a uh, ODE, which is basically what you've been doing all along. Uh, you just had, like when you take the Lagrangian of the, when you take the gradient of the Lagrangian and you set it to zero, you're technically just solving a um, an ODE, but yeah, okay. All right, so so yeah, we talked about this last time. Suppose you have a function u and you revolve it around the x-axis, you get you get a vase like that. And then the question is, find the u that will minimize, that will give you a vase of minimum uh, paint area, okay? So you don't have to paint the vase a lot. And uh, this is given by this, which I found you did it last year, in your, not last year, you did it in the second year. Um, calculus. So that's all right. So then uh, to do all the Lagrangian, you need the Lagrangian. And the Lagrangian is given by this function. Uh, that's because whenever you see u, you put z. Whenever you see u prime, you put p, okay? And uh, yeah, so we see here that uh, the z guy, uh, we have an absolute value. So because we don't wanna take derivatives with absolute values because 
uh, they're not differentiable due to the cusp, we uh, would change our function space. So we change our function space um, to this guy. Uh, yeah. Let me ask you a question. Is this a vector space? Just to see if you know, if anything state. Huh? Oh. Andrew, as if you're, yeah, Andrew? Oh, who is it? Uh, Daniel? What do you guys think? It doesn't have additive inverse. What? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I will have said you cannot multiply by minus, but it's the same thing. So, yeah, um, uh, minus u is not in the space. So, you cannot uh, subtract functions, for example. So, no. And that's bad, but what can you do? That means you have to be careful when you uh, when you perturb. Same thing as when you did your other stuff. Your this is your feasible region, okay. And you want when you perturb to perturb uh, with epsilon positive. So u plus epsilon v, and epsilon is to be positive. Okay. Good. So that's the price we pay for not doing uh, absolute values. Yeah, okay, let me explain how you get this. So uh, again, the function is two pi z one plus pi squared, and you take derivative in z, which gives you this, and you take derivative in p. Uh, which gives you the thing I wrote there. And the um, the Euler Lagrange, I want to memorize it, uh, is uh, this guy. Okay. The way I remember it is because I had to do integration by parts. Yeah. And okay, whatever. Um, so this is your Euler Lagrange, and I'll just show you. That's the one. So let's do it together. I don't want to just give you the answer. Uh, can someone tell me what is uh, this guy? DLP. What should I write here? Yeah. Yeah. And what about all Z? Yeah, this is terrible. I have no idea how to solve it. Um, I, do I? Um, no, I don't know. Maybe you can do change of variables. But okay, here's the, uh, yeah, it's an ODE. So, um, but we know how these solutions look like. How would you know though? Oh. Ah, I know, I know. You haven't learned that. I wish so this was a prerequisite. You have to do a change of variables. Um, okay, anyways. So we'll just verify that this guy, this uh, cos h, so uh, cos h of x, is equal to Vx e minus x over two and uh, cinch of x, uh, same thing with the minus, okay? And uh, we'll verify that it solves this uh, ugly looking ODE. Okay, let's go. Yeah, that's a good, isn't that a good question for the final? Like. Find <laughs> wait, wait, like give you the like I have to find the question, right? We can talk about this. 
So we have a functional. Um, you find the only Lagrange, part A, and then part B verify that this guy is a solution. Yeah, yeah. What do you guys think? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, what do you want? What? Is that good? Oh, because oh, it depends on, yeah, it's a little bit ugly. You're right. But okay, let's do it. So you take derivative, and derivative of um, cos h is cinch. Um, and then, um, and then I here I use the identity. Uh, do you guys know which identity I'm using? I can just tell you. No, you've never seen it. Yeah, I know it's almost yeah exactly. So it's cinch. Um, yeah, and it equals uh, cos h. Compare this to a trigonometric. Uh, no, no, you can you can bring your notes. But uh, but okay, I don't know what you will need to know. Like, yeah, I mean, no, like this stuff. No, I will put it as a hint or something. Like this identity, yeah. Yeah, I will put hints like that. Did I give you a good hint in the Peter? Wasn't that a good hint? No? For the duo? Huh? Yeah. I was like, should I put it? Yes. Don't don't destroy them. Yeah, so I put I put hints. All right. And um yeah, so what was the OD? Uh can I memorize it? Uh, let me memorize it. Uh, u u prime, and then the square root u u prime, and there's no two pi. Okay, so what happened here? Here you have minus d dx of u u prime over one plus uh, u prime squared plus uh, same guy one plus. Uh, u prime square equals zero. So yeah, we use two here. And um, how do I get this? Uh, yes, thank you. Yeah, so we have uh, u, u prime, one plus u prime squared is, um, Cos, cinch, cos, and they cancel out. Yes, thank you. All right, it's good. What? Did I make a mistake? What? Yeah, the beta is over here. What? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. That's left put it here. You're right. Yes. Um. Yeah. So then you have to verify that it, it's zero, and you use the following. You use that the derivative of cinch is a hyperbolic cosine. Okay. I mean, I know I'm writing this symbol, but this is so easy. This just says d dx of uh, e x e minus x is equal to e to the x plus e minus x. That's all it says, which is obvious, right? Yeah, <laughs> whatever. Okay, and then so indeed they cancel out. Okay, so this is a solution to your Euler Lagrange, and it suffices to check your um, initial conditions, okay? Is it that easy so far? No? Okay, good. So uh, uh, I have to check this initial conditions. What does that mean? It means uh, u of zero has to equal one, yeah. And u of one has to equal one, okay? So 
when I write down AA to, uh, to uh, BB, it means you want U of A to be A and uh, U of B to be B, okay? You understand? All right. So I wanna do this with you because I'm bored. Uh, so um, U of zero, what is that? Yeah, any idea what is U of zero? What is it? Oh yeah, it's forced to be one, right. But then this case is equal to um, uh, oh, um, e to the uh, minus a over beta plus uh, uh, a over beta over two. That looks terrible. How the hell did I solve this? <laughs> I see, yeah, so you have these two equations. So the first one came from uh, u0 is one. And the second guy came from u1 is one, okay? All right, now we're gonna use some dirty tricks with hyperbolics. All right. Oh. Uh, yeah, okay, there we go. No, I want to solve this. What was the trick? Uh, is it possible to solve it? Let me check. Suppose I know, no, no, I need to find beta alpha. So first of all, um, divide, no, no, no. Let me see if I can get this. All right, here's how you do it. I don't know who cares, but I will say it anyhow. So you uh, you do the change of variables. Um, what's a good change? How, how should I call this? P, call it P, um, the, this guy, and uh, call it Q, okay? Then you have the following uh, thing. You have, am I over, just, just do it. <laughs> you have uh, one over P plus, plus P equal to one over beta. And you have Q over P. And P over Q. And um, yeah, anyhow, so you can get it from here, okay? What, do I have to do this? Uh, from, from here you get P, so I mean, it's disgusting. Okay, it might be a little bit too hard actually. Um, I might just give you the, the final answer or something. Yeah, yeah, this is too much. You won't have time to do this. So I might be like, you get this equation, this equation has this answer. Or just get, yeah, this equation has this answer, something like that. Or I'll make sure the system is easy. We'll see. No, you won't have to do this, okay? What, question? Did you been really, did you, like John Nash, did you find something? Uh, Yeah, beta is still there, I know. 
Okay, did you? What? All right, all right, all right, all right, fine. Do I have to do this? I don't want to do it. But this is terrible. No, I mean, okay, I don't know. I mean, did you have an idea or what? What? No, this is hard. I mean, you, I can't even isolate for P. Uh, like I still have beta. I shouldn't have beta here. So this is a lot harder than it looks. Um, anyways, doesn't matter. But yeah, it would be much simpler. But one thing that I want you to be able to do is uh, check when there is no solution. Okay, so I don't know who has taken ODEs before, but uh, there are uh, ODEs with boundaries that have no answer. There is no solution because there's a conflict. So suppose that these are your new boundaries. So meaning, um, you know, instead of what was our boundary? Uh, our boundary was that they're both equal to one. Suppose that one is one and the other one is zero, okay? So different boundaries. But then when you, uh, when you put them in, you will get problems. So you have the system. But then uh, so this is a problem, right? Because what is cos h is equal to ax e minus x, right? Right? And this is always strictly positive. It doesn't matter what stuff is here. Yeah, so, so contradiction. I mean, okay, you get beta equals zero, but then, <laughs> okay, let, let me do it slowly. So first of all, you have two numbers here. Cos h is always strictly positive. So from here, you get that beta is zero. But then from here, you get, uh, you get that, uh, get something crazy. You get that this guy needs to be, I don't know, it doesn't work. I mean, this guy is as a finite number. Um, all right, let me do it. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not doing infinities. This is a, supposed to be a finite number. Okay, fine, let me write it. Yeah, this is infinity. <laughs> so yeah, you get contradictions because you want this guy to be finite. Otherwise it makes no sense as a boundary. So you get uh, zero times a finite number uh, this guy, but it's not finite okay, enough. So it doesn't work because you get, uh, you get an infinite solution, all right? Um, you, you, yeah, anyways. Um, so yeah, it doesn't work. Let me put it in words. Um, for this to work, uh, we need uh, alpha to be basically beta. Otherwise, it doesn't work. It blows up. And um, anyway, so from here, you get, uh, so when you of alpha, oof, you get alpha minus alpha, which is zero. Anyways, for this we need alpha, but we get uh, we get uh, zero is one. All right. Let me just stop talking. And the problem is one guy says beta is zero, and the other guy will give you that zero is one. Is that okay? I I know there's more to the story. But that's all I will need to be able to do. That one guy says the coefficient is one thing, but when you plug it in, it tells you, uh, when you plug this in over here, it tells you that zero needs to be one, which is false, okay? 
Is that everybody? Okay. Good. Um, yeah, so going back to what Andrew uh, asked me last time, uh, is it here? Yeah, so um, again, let's go back. What, what the heck were we asking for? We asked for a graph that goes from at zero is one and at one is zero. Okay, so it, it does something crazy and then it's, um, it's zero, okay? Right? And, and you make a vase out of it. Okay. And the question was, find the graph that minimizes uh, the surface area of the vase. And we found that that is just given by this exponential. So let me graph it for you just in case, because I don't remember it. So we're talking about cos h. How does it look like? So it blows up both ways exponentially fast, yeah. But then how would you draw this? That's weird. Uh, anyways, so we found that the minimizer looks something like, so EX E minus X, so it blows up. But then it has a little bit. So at zero, you're two, say, and then, um, but it blows up, whatever. So, but it blows up with a little, yeah, anyway. So I don't know if you've seen the pictures. Let me, I will show you next. So you basically get a siphon. This is supposed to be the minimizer of, um, uh, this is the vase with the least surface area. And not surprisingly, all vases look like this because we are very cheap. So, uh, yeah, so this is the minimizer, supposed to look like this. But, um, uh, yeah, and then the question is, why do you think the boundary conditions failed? Okay, we got beta is zero and zero is equal to one. Uh, what, what can you explain? So again, uh, what I'm asking from the function is to go from one to zero. Uh, Andrew, can you explain what you think is happening? You talked about this last time, if you wanna, but okay. Um, so what happens is, no? Okay. Um, the, the solution wants to look like a step function. So you have the following again, we're asking for the guy to go from one down to zero and to minimize the surface area. Well, the best case is when you just go like this and then you jump really, really fast down and then you're flat, right? That's a vase with the most, the least surface area, because there's no base, right? Does that make sense? You only have the base, someone brought the base, okay? Does that make sense? So again, your boundary conditions uh, over here are forcing the, um, um, are forcing the minimizer to look like a step function, but step functions are, not um, C1, okay? So this guy here is not differentiable. Does that make sense? No? I don't know if people, the slope contributes a lot. Um, no, 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 but wait, what are you talking about? Does this mic work? Okay, I don't know. Um, no, but the, the surface, I mean, the point is this guy is not differentiable. If you just put the step function, 
But yeah, if you put the derivative, then in the functional, um, you are in trouble because in the functional, where is it? Over here, no, here. So uh, here, yes, the slope contributes a lot. So let me write it down. I think that's a good, um, good question. So, So again, our functional was uh, zero one, two pi u, and then one plus u prime squared. And the reason we don't have a solution, why no solution, or uh, u zero one, u uh, one zero. Uh, reason one is that you get uh, you get a um, step function as minimizer. But uh, um, so, which looks like this zero. Um, so it's one at zero and uh, is one at zero and zero afterwards. But uh, this you guy. Uh, is not uh, differentiable. Um, like Andrew says, if it was, uh, u prime of u star uh, would be infinite with minus, because it drops really fast. Yeah, it goes like boom. Um, yeah, does that make sense? Andrew, is that what you wanted to say? Okay, I don't know. All right. Um, but we live in the real world and in the real world, Minimizers are not graphs, they're surfaces, 3D surfaces. So uh, we have to talk about vector valued U. Um, so just to see if you understand, um, if U goes from AB to uh, R3, how does it look like? Any ideas? Just to see if four years of math taught you anything. Andrew, Daniel, how does it look like? What do you think? Does it look, this is like a, who wants to be a millionaire? Choice A. Choice B. Um, with uh, content. And uh, what else? Uh, that's all. I'm, I run out of dimensions. Oh, and yeah, uh, A, B, or C. Huh? You said C? What do you guys think? A, B, C. Yeah, it's like a filled ball. Can it be a filled ball? A, what are you guys talking about? It's B. So, and the reason is, um, 
because uh, you have one variable. Uh, this is in R. So every point needs to get mapped into one point. So this is the UB and this is the UA. And so, okay, how will I prove this to you? Think about it this way. Uh, when you're in an interval, uh, you can only move backwards and forwards, right? So the same thing happens here. When you're talking about rate of change, you can only move uh, in one direction. Whereas here, um, this guy corresponds when U goes from AB squared. So now you have two ways to move. And uh, here corresponds to a b cube, because now you have um, three directions that you can change your function along. Like, I don't know. The point is, uh, we can still do only Lagrange because you're still looking at graphs. Okay, and uh, when you talk about perturbation, u plus epsilon v, it's still it still makes sense. Um, it's a little bit more complicated when you have um, surfaces, right? So we'll talk about this. But the point is we can still do all the Lagrange and I will prove it to you now. Why did you guys think A? Hey. Okay, so um, yeah, so now L, is a function on um, x, u, and u prime, and u is in Rn, and uh, u prime is also in Rn, the derivative, okay? I mean, derivative with respect to x, it's still a function on, yeah. So there's no problem with calculating partial derivatives. Yeah, okay, so let me just tell you the equation and then I will derive it for you. So uh, the way you should read this is the, as following. It's a system uh, dx, and then you take all the partials. So LPI, LZI, so LZ1, and uh, LPN plus LZN, okay? So you have a system of all Lagrange. It will be a system of all these. All right, let's derive it. So again, the I'm just showing you that you can do calculus of variations with vector valued functions. So now your functional, um, every component here is in Rn, okay? And you do your usual perturbation, but you do it for each variable, okay? So compare this to a, a second year multivariable uh, uh, partial derivatives, right? So remember in first, second year, whatever, you had things like f of x, y is e x, y right, the guy from the midterm. And then you um, you take partials. Mm. Okay. So, um, Oh, this is supposed to be zero. Okay. I'll fix it. Uh, so you do a perturbation with respect to test functions. And uh, yeah, let's take, yes. 
Can you give me like one minute? Wait, I thought I uploaded it. I didn't upload it. That's weird. Oh, I see. I didn't. Um, I see. Yeah, can you see it now? Yeah. Is it there? <laughs> Did I change something? Oh, it's there? Oh, very good. The slides are there now. Okay, thank you. Um, yes. Uh, so it's the same thing. You just have to now take partial derivatives and set them to zero. So I take partial and um, I set it to zero, right? But we'll talk about this. So I take partial. And then I do chain rule. Okay, so let me explain what happened here. So you have L, uh, D, D, Epsilon, and then you have X, U plus Epsilon V, uh, V plus U prime Epsilon V prime. And, um, and I ignore the other ones, I don't care. They don't have the Epsilon. The other ones are, um, the other ones have U, uh, they have U I, right? Where I is not K, right? Does that make sense? Okay, so that's why it doesn't matter and they're decoupled. So next week we'll do PDEs where they are decoupled, but for now, uh, you just have ODEs. You won't see PDEs. You will see ODEs, but you won't see PDEs in the final. Uh, come hang me if I uh, shoot me down. If I do. yes, okay. Um, so anyway, so you do that, and uh, I get uh, the two terms by total derivative. Is that okay? Okay, good. But then uh, from here to here, we do the same trick from before, integration by parts. You take out the VK and can someone tell me? Yeah, okay. And then the only difference now is that you want your gradient over all the epsilons to be zero. But what's the gradient over epsilons by definition is partial epsilon one, right? partial epsilon n of f equal to the zero uh, vector. So you want each of them to be zero, right? So remember, this is what we called first order condition, okay? So this is second year calculus. So far we did first year, now we're doing second year. And then, um, so you set this integral to zero and we'll take a break here. Uh, can someone tell me uh, how to get my ODE from here? So I know that this guy is zero. How do I get the uh, the ODE?
Huh? What lemma do I want to use? So you will have to know this. I mean, it will be in your notes in the final, but it's good to know it by heart so that you don't have to like. It will be so noisy in the final, people going through their books. Maybe wear some earplugs. Yeah. So what's the lemma? What is it called? Yeah, there we go. F little o c, fundamental theorem of calculus of variations. So I put the other letters, F O C V. Yeah. What if it helps you memorize it? Okay. F O C V. All right. So let's take a break and I'll do the example. FOC, FOCB. Okay. Good, thank you, yes. Oh, oh I see. Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, well, then you found it. Then you, uh, I see. Uh, and then what? How did you do it? Can you use a cockpit of this? You know, you can use a calculator to solve like what it is. 
What? I don't want to use it for a while, but I can use it for a while. No, she told me. She just wanted to use it. So you're able to do what you need or what? What can you do with that? Oh, I see. It's kind of like you can solve a. And then you have this. So, okay, can you do something like that? Like when you zero is something you constantly define? No, I'm sticking to the company. What kind of systems can you put there? No, but you can put variables, right? You can solve the variable. Huh? Sorry, what is you want to solve? No, I just want to try if you might have to use something that you can use. I don't know. No, no, you, I mean, well, I see what you're saying. If, if it was just A and B, you can do it because cosine of zero is one, sine of x is zero. Yeah, you can do it. What did you do? Oh, I see. I did really well now. Okay, what about the hard part? Which is, um, <laughs> oh, yeah. There's another student. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if you can sort them. Use the yeah, Try to, like, practice uh, sitting with the student. I don't know if you Yeah, you don't have to show us everything. I mean, I no, I understand. I understand. It doesn't take you like. Um, is there a way to do it faster? No, but it's so nice. Uh, if you can, if you, I don't know how to like. If you can find a way to like. <laughs> no, no, it's up to you. Okay. Just to save you time, okay? it's not for us. And also, uh, if you guys don't know how deep to go into a question, ask them. All right? That's why I'm in Zoom. You can go like, once, like, do three pages of that. Well, not be the way. <laughs> Save yourself some time and, like, do the other stuff. Yeah, but like you can check your panel. You guys should talk to me. Don't don't be shy. Okay.
Right. Okay. So, um, right. So we, uh, um, when your functions are vector valued, you get a system of all Lagrange. So let's do an example. Um, uh, y, Y1. So you have two components for the trajectories. And this is your functional. Um, I don't know if it has a physical meaning, but yeah. So let's minimize it. And yeah, you always have to give your boundary data. So that's the boundary data. And what does it say? It says, it's kind of hard to visualize because it's in three dimensions. Um, but, uh, Let's just say R2, it goes from zero to where? Where does it go? Yeah, what do you think? Shall I do it? What? This is one, or no? What the hell am I writing? Oh, this is pi over two. Anyways, it goes up to a one, a one minus one. Okay. So this is the path and you minimize over all such paths. This one has a nice, no, no, it doesn't. All right, question. Um, yeah, so this is the only Lagrange, okay, by definition. So when you see uh, putting this, uh, you look at the two, so you get two, okay? And uh, so you have two equations, and uh, I want to do this with you. So first, um, can someone tell me what is Z1? What do you think? What will Z1 be? Huh? Yeah, it's Y1. Z2 is what? And P1. Good. So these are your variables. Um, yeah. And now, is that okay? And now let's take derivatives. So what is L of P1? What do you think? What is it? Oh yeah, yeah what is L of P1? Very easy. Zoom people, huh? What is it? What? Yeah, because this guy is people. So, okay, first, what is the Lagrangian? Let's just do that. What's the Lagrangian? Plus what? Yeah. Okay. So this guy is 2P1, 2P2. And uh, LZ1 is 2Z2. LZ2 is 2Z1. All right, good. Okay, so what? Then uh, have it in your notes, have this system, and then you just plug in. So you, you go up. So you, um, yeah, we just computed all this stuff. 
and I just plugged it in. So uh, yeah, whatever. So that's what we did. And now I'm gonna solve this uh, ugly looking system. So I hope it's not too hard for you. If it is, you have to tell me. Um, so first, let's clean this up. What does it say? Uh, which way do I want it? Here. So it says that y1 is equal to d2, d2 um, y1. Uh, sorry, what? This is y2. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay? And then you use the, the first equation over here to get D4. of y1, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, good. So then you get this fourth equation and has anybody seen um, characteristic equations? No, you mean, have you seen it? Okay, good. You should have been in the course. You've been great, <laughs> easy stuff. Okay, good. Uh, anyway, so you this is called the characteristic equation. And all you have to do is plug it in. So you plug it in and you get D4 DT uh, E lambda T equal to E lambda T. And what, what does the left become? L to the what? Huh? Four, right? So you get lambda four is one. And I don't know if you've seen this, uh, I will try to find a way to make it. I might just give you the, I don't know what to give you. Is that too much of a jump? Like if somebody tells you L four is one, are you able to say that he has these four solutions or no? Have you heard me? Have you done any complex? Oh, you took complex variables? Okay, I can put contours then. I can put a... <laughs> <laughs> but okay, you, you've seen at least the um, roots of unity. Yeah, so this is the roots of unity. Um, but anyways, I mean, this is something you can put in, in your calculator. So please bring your calculator. And when you put this guy, it will give you these four solutions, okay? And then just write it down and I will be happy. Just write down that the general solution is given by just putting all the roots, okay? T minus EIT and E to the minus IT, okay? Even if you just do the first step, it's fine. If you can do the second step, I will be super happy as well. Um, you don't have to justify it. This is beyond our course, but um, yeah, whatever you like. I don't know what to tell you. So um, if you can write down the trigonometrics, that would be very nice, okay? If you wanna find out why it's true, it's called Euler's formula. Okay, and it's the following, EIT is equal to um, uh, cosine T plus I sine T, okay? Yeah, so you don't have to know this. Uh, I just want you to uh, do this step here. So when you see complex, go to trigonometric. You don't have to justify it. You will not lose marks. You don't have to do anything. Just find the roots, write down the general solution and uh, uh, then change it to the real solution, okay? Because uh, we don't want to have imaginary numbers in our solution, Do you understand? Okay, good. That's all, the, the, like that would be like a perfect answer and you just go out and dance. Okay, okay, good. All right, what else? 
Yeah, okay, fine. Then you do the same thing and you get your other Y2. All right. Um, I might not ask you for boundary theta because it takes too long. But if you sit down and do all these calculations for the boundary data, let me start a little bit. I should say a little bit, shouldn't I? Okay, what was the boundary data? I see, that is disgusting. So both zero and both, uh, and the other one is minus one, one, all right. I should do a little bit. So how did we get this? All right, again, what's the boundary data? They both are equal to zero, but then at pi two, uh, one is minus one, and the other one is one. So what do you do? You set it to zero. So y one of zero gives you the following uh, equation. Uh, a plus B minus C, no, plus C. And then Y two zero gives you um, A plus B minus C. All right. But then if you add them, it cleans up a little bit. A plus B, um, you get that A is equal to minus B. And so you get that C is zero, okay? And so we're not done. Now I have to do the other one. Um, when you put uh, Y1 to be pi over two, you get A to the pi over two, you get B to the e minus pi over two. What's the uh, cosine of pi over two? Yeah, thank you. Zero, and then uh, what is sine of pi over two? The opposite of zero. <laughs> huh? Yeah, one, I don't know. What's the opposite? I have no idea. Then, uh, okay, so this is minus one. And you do it for the other guy as well. and you get uh, minus D equal to one. All right, so same dirty trick gives you that um, A is equal to what? Yeah, A is equal to, what do you want? Um, yeah, I add them. So when I add them, uh, I get equal to zero, right? Yeah, with a two. And then, uh, anyways, so this is zero. So again, you get, Is that weird? So this guy is dead. This guy is dead. D is minus one. Yeah, and D is minus one. Okay? Huh? Because these guys are zero. Yeah. So D is minus one. So I got that. I got that C equals zero. How the hell am I gonna get that A and B are zero? Yes, please. So from this guy, right? Yeah, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I knew it. So lazy. Um, so plug in A equal B minus B. So you get um, A, uh, A pi over uh, with a minus. Uh, equaling zero, yeah? But this guy is not zero. So A is zero. Okay, is that reasonable for a question? Huh? Okay, good.
All right, so, oh, more examples, wow. Oh no, this one is more like a homework. Um, anyway, so this is the functional. Yeah, if you can do this as homework, I should put it as homework instead of saying, okay, I will put this in the homework, okay? Um, but I wrote the solution. God damn it. Uh, well, maybe solving it will be hard. And uh, so you might have to suffer. So I'm not sure. I will put it on Wolfram Alpha, see if it's hard. Is it hard? No, no, this is easy. U double prime is zero. So right away you get the linear function. And then from here you get cosine. Yeah, that might be a good homework, we'll see. I don't know. No, I'll find you from the textbook, it's fine. All right, uh, famous example, uh, uh, Hamiltonian mechanics. So, so you have potential plus kinetic. So for example, you throw a basketball up in the air, you have put gravitational potential pushing it down, MVG, right? And um, yeah, and you also have uh, kinetic. The higher you throw the ball, the faster it will get thrown down by gravity. But we're solving general problems. Or maybe you don't have more, you have wind, you have a bunch of stuff. So you have a potential guy. And this will be our Lagrangian, all right? So we will minimize, uh, yeah, over this guy. So now here's the problem. Uh, you you have a spaceship. There's a black hole, and you want to like move through it by minimizing the rate of change, uh, the change of energy, the work, if you like. Okay, so minimizing uh, work. This is called like list principle. Okay. What? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what you want to call it, but we're minimizing the Hamiltonian. So like the way uh, you can think about this is, sure, I mean, like, uh, yeah, I mean, I understand this is the action, but uh, intuitively though, like you're minimizing the, the effort required. I mean effort, I don't mean like the, Work, I don't mean the one with the, the, the line integral, right? Uh, I just mean like work, actual work. So the Hamiltonian. So this guy uh, minimizes uh, the energy you spent to move through the system. Yeah, this is not called work. That's why I use the word uh, least action. Yeah, this is the action, yes. Yeah, we're gonna integrate this. Sorry, what? Yes, but it's also called the action. No, 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 I mean, whatever you, no, it's not, I mean, it's not. The, the guy you have inside the integral is called the action. I mean, I, this is like, yeah. And you, you mean, that's why it's called list principle action because you want to, this is your cost functional, right? So you minimize the amount of action that you do. I mean, of course I have to integrate it. I understand, yeah. Um, but anyway, so yes. 
Yeah, okay, let me write it here as well. So this is the the action we want to minimize. No, I think I agree with you. Yeah. So you want to minimize the total, minimize the total action. Right. Anyways, so the picture you should have in mind, right, is you have a particle in space and you have some potential and you want to minimize the amount of kinetic and potential spent. So I want to do this with you. Yeah, let's do it together. So um, can someone tell me what is L of X? What is L of X I? Huh? What? Can you speak up? No. Like, look where X shows up. Yeah, what? I mean, we're gonna derive this. I'm trying to derive this. So how would you, uh, yeah, what is L of Xi? Minus what? Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, with respect to, um, yeah. And then um, L of V, I, where's that? Is there a parenthesis? That's weird. Hmm? What is LOVI? So let's stare at this. What is that? This is a half M summation of VK squared K1 to N, right? So when I take partial of VI, who's left? Huh? What? Yeah, yeah, but who's left? Yeah. Right? Because they all die. Okay, good. And... Um, why is there a parenthesis here? That's really weird. I'm so then only Lagrange is not this. Why did I write this? I mean, I know what Ole Lagrange is. It's this guy with uh, L of um, V, right? Plus uh, L of X equals zero, right? That's Ole Lagrange. But yet I wrote this. Okay, we'll see. I mean, this is not right. Uh, I don't know what I meant. Yeah, I knew it was wrong. So this is a parenthesis over here. Okay. All right, just to explain this, uh, I think you lost. Um, so, uh, so this gives you a system, right? And the system will be the following. It will be minus D D T of L V one plus uh, L of X one. But what is that? This is minus DTT of uh, MV1, uh, but at the path. So I have to put X dot uh, one T, and then um, minus uh, V, 
partial one of um, x t. Is that okay? Does that make sense? No? Yeah, of course, just tell me, yeah. So again, we, we have this um, crazy looking Lagrangian. And uh, I already put the variables, okay, x, v, but now I have to come back to my, uh, to my minimizer, right? So, so remember how we do this. So you take the LV1 and you evaluate V1 at X dot one T. Is that okay? Everybody happy? All right. Plus partial Z1, or sorry, X1 of L evaluated at uh, X1 equal to X1 T. And same thing. So V1 will be X dot one T and uh, X1, X1 T. Is that okay? All right, good, that's all. And then, uh, so let me do that. So we just computed MVI. So you have uh, minus DT M what? M times what? What do you think? Without, uh, what, what is it? So I plugged in V1 and I have it over here. What? Huh? What? Yeah, but what is VI? Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm doing the first, yeah, let me put I all over the place. So this is X I dot T. And then um, the other guy was minus V. <sighs> okay. All right. And in short form is just this gradient. So uh, you should think about this as a system. So let me write it underneath. So you have minus DTT of M um, V for V equal to X dot, I might as well write X dot. plus uh, minus the gradient of uh, VXT. So then you have a system of them. The one I just wrote, DT, I might as well put the thing, uh, M X double prime one X double prime M. Is that okay? All right. So you have this equation and if you learned it in physics, uh, this is called Newton's second law. Yeah, you mean? Yeah, you mean agrees, good. So the guy over here is uh, mass times acceleration. And this guy was the definition of force, okay? Minus V potential is the force. That's what Newton discovered. So let's do some minimizations. Um, yeah, so this is what we found. 
So this is our functional and we're gonna minimize it. So let's do an example with a specific potential. So uh, you're in R3, you have a fixed location, um, the origin, and then you have a pendulum of length L and like David, you just move it around and throw it. Yes. But it's like a rod, this is like a rod pendulum. Um, otherwise there's too much chaos. If you let the length uh, change around. So let's do that. So this is the potential. Um, this is just kinetic energy and this is the one from gravity. Okay, gravitational potential. And uh, I'm gonna minimize this. Um, because my length is fixed, I'm basically moving in circles. So uh, if you like pictorially, this is your origin. And this is the unit, uh, the L circle. And you have a, a rock moving in the sphere, right? So it has an angle. Let me make this bigger. So you have azimuthal and uh, you have a sphere and you have an angle. So you have a planar angle and the azimuthal. So this is theta with Z. Uh -huh. And then you have a phi with the, um, with the plane. So I should put it down like this. And this is phi. I don't know if it makes any sense. So you have phi on the plane and theta so theta is how far you are from being flat, and phi is how much you distort it around the positive x-axis, okay? So left, right, up, down. So this is up, down, left, right. Okay, all right. So these are called spherical coordinates. All right, and I'm gonna plug them in to make my ODE simpler. So by chain rule, so this is just chain rule. You get this um, X prime and Y prime, and I plug them into my system and you get this guy. So why is it so beautiful? I should say how, how I got this. So let me do a little bit, some steps. So let me do the X prime. Oof. Yeah, whatever, let's do the X prime. Unless, is there a way to, hmm, there might be a quicker way, right? Maybe we can use some sort of, um, do you think we can use some geometry here? All right, let me do it. Uh, so if I square them, I get theta prime. That looks terrible, doesn't it? Is there a quick way to do this? I mean, oh my God, it looks terrible. All right, is there a quick way to do this? No, I'm just complaining for working. No, you have to do it this way. There's no other way. I don't see, is there another way? How else would you do this? 
And then when you square them, you start factoring things out. So what happens is, for example, you will, um, so from these two guys, you get cosine um, phi squared, cosine theta, plus sine phi squared, cosine theta, which is just, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, which is just cosine theta squared, right? Yeah? Does that make sense? I don't know. Is that too ugly? <laughs> All right, fine, fine. Who cares? If you do, I don't know, that might be too much, you know. All right, good, I know my limits. You can tell me. Uh... Okay, good. But anyways, this is how you do it. If you can find another way, I would love to hear it. I think there is another way using Jacobian, but um, anyways. So you do this, you plug them in, and it turns out that it becomes very, very simple, like this. That's very nice. And now you change your variables, All right? So I have my new Lagrangian and I'm gonna minimize it over the angles, okay? And this is a little bit simpler than before. I wanna ask you though, I wanna do this with you. Yeah, let's do it together. So can at least can you at least give me the system? Not the numbers. What's the system? Like the abstract system. No, nothing specific. Like you have these variables. How does the system look like? If you remember. Minus dt of who? Any ideas? Not specific, like general. Huh? L of what? Yeah, yeah. So, so. Yeah, let me write it in a form. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it is L of P, but it's L of P1. Uh, I'm, I'm writing the system. And L of P1 is theta prime. So dt theta dot of L. Is that okay? Which is what you said, um, L of P1. However you want to think about this. And then what would be the other guy? Huh? Yeah, exactly, that's all. And then the other one is symmetric. So you have a partial partial of phi dot, and then, yeah, perfect. Good. So this is your system. And I think I have it here. Oh, it looks terrible. Uh, okay, let me explain. So Z1, let me write the variables, all right? Z1 is theta, Z2 is phi, um, uh, P1 is theta dot, and P2 is phi dot. Okay, and then I'm saying take the derivative with theta. Let's do it together, okay? Can someone tell me what's the derivative with respect to theta? Oh, well, that looks terrible. Yeah, yeah, actually I wanna ask you, yeah. Can you tell me what's the derivative with respect to theta? What? Oh yeah, yeah, that's the main thing I wanted. And then two times, I don't know, I don't know that, yeah. Times cosine theta, right? Uh, plus um, MGL sine theta. Don't you have a mind? Yeah, that's what you said, right? Yeah. Uh, anyways, but don't make this mistake. Um, uh, this guy became zero, right? I don't know, I'm just saying, like, be careful. Because 
Okay, good. So that's what we have here. Um, uh, yeah, over here. Okay. And yeah, fine. So then what? So this is your system and then you plug it in into your ODE. All right. So you have the two ODEs I talked about over here and you plug them in. Does this clean up? This looks terrible. Evaluating and canceling terms. Oh, I see. I like my dots, they, they became sideways. Okay, I'll fix it. Um, anyway, so you take all these derivatives and you get this guy. Yeah, I don't think you will see this. This is too hard. How do I do it afterwards? Describe the motion of a pendulum. Yeah, yeah, okay. But um, yeah, so in 3D, this is really hard. It's a nonlinear ODE. Uh, but to make our life easy, we will assume that you're flat. So there's no azimuthal. So in the next slide, we study the simple case when the azimuthal is dead. So you just get this guy and we can do this. So what does that say? It says that um, here's in other language, y double prime is equal to minus a sine of y. Okay, that's your ODE, all right? Let me put uh, d dt square. So this is your ODE. It's a nonlinear ODE because it depends on psi. Right? So that's terrible, but um, it's separable. Do you remember separable? You know what I'm saying? No? Yeah? Did you take all these? Happy Harmony? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, right, right. So we have separable equations and, um, right? Something like that. Can I solve it? I want to look at the solution. Too much math. So we have sine of y with a minus equal to y double prime. So what is that? Damn, yeah, it's disgusting. <laughs> it's called the amplitude Jacobi. Oh, good. So I knew it. This is from number theory, yeah. Um, anyhow, it looks terrible. How, how does this look like? Okay, we went too deep. We got ground. There's no form for it. Okay, I'm just moving on. All right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, now you come into the world of numerics. Yeah, I mean, I think this is something you can do, right? Like you, you can just start with some functional and then just give us the ODE at the end and stop there. That's okay too, right? Just giving the ODE, not solving it. Like if, if the ODE is complicated. All right, so I have options. All right, coming back, yeah, we'll finish this next week. Uh, good. So equality constraints, finally, we're gonna do some interesting stuff. So remember we had this um, uh, minimization problems, right? Question three, no, question two in the, in the middle. So you have a function and then you have a constraint. Yeah, good memories. Okay, good. And then and then we have, um, and we need it to be a regular point. And we have Lagrange multipliers. So it turns out that the same can be done here. We can do Lagrange uh, multipliers for uh, variational calculus. Yeah, and we'll come back. There's two types of constraints. 
So here's the deal. You have one functional that is the cost and you have another functional that is the um, constraint. And what is it here? So you want to say, you want to find the trajectory that uh, minimizes the first guy, but remains constant. So what you should have in mind, let me think. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm gonna talk about it. So it's called isoperimetric. So here's the example. So your guy goes from um, this point to this point, and you fix the, um, the area under the graph, okay? So you want the area under the graph to be one. So you want integral of u to be one, okay? You fix it. And then the question is, uh, what minimizes the perimeter? So what was the perimeter? Uh, the length, right? So, okay, you wanna minimize area, whatever you want, I don't care. Okay. So yeah, minimize area. So yeah, you can do it both ways. So minimize the area given that the length is some number equal to one. So you have perimeter is one, but then you wanna minimize the amount of um, surface area. So this guy could be, yeah. Does it make sense? You want, you fix, what is it? Yeah, yeah, anyways, the answer is the circle, all right? So the area with the least amount of area, so a circle we will show next week has a least area uh, given a fixed perimeter. Okay, so you fix the perimeter to be one, and then the area is minimized by the circle. All right, thank you. Okay.